right, good morning, 10th grade. Hang on, I'm gonna fix this. My bad. Cutting off the top of my head a little bit. Oh, there we go. Now I don't look like I'm shaved bald. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing great this morning. Um, we are going to finish up our last section on fish with this video. Uh, and we are gonna be looking at cartilaginous fish, all right? Uh, now remember to be keeping up with your notes, okay? We are going to, when we get back to school, I am going to be grading them. Don't send your notes in, guys, okay? Keep your notes, and then when we come back to school, I'll go through all of them and give you a grade based on that. If something changes, I will let you know, okay? But until then, you plan on keeping your notes, all right? So here we go, cartilaginous fish. There are two classes of cartilaginous fish. And I looked up how to pronounce these to make sure that I'm saying them right so you don't get confused because, you know, sometimes I say stuff the way that I learned it and it's not always quite right. So, the first classification are the chondrichthys. These are composed of sharks, rays, and chimeras or chimeras, okay? They make up 3% of the known species of fish. They, have, they all have jaws and cartilaginous skeletons. The cartilage is extremely flexible. Okay, um, so instead of bones, they're, instead of their bones being made of bone, or their skeletons being made of bone, their skeletons are actually made of cartilage, um, which makes them extremely flexible. If you think about a, a, the way a ray swims, or even the way a shark swims, okay, uh, they have a lot more flexibility than the average fish does. And then you have the cyclostomata. These are composed of lampreys and hagfish, and we're we'll gonna talk about what they look like when we discuss them in depth in a few minutes. Okay, so first we're gonna look at sharks. Okay, sharks have an extremely streamlined body, which makes them fast and efficient swimmers. So, remember streamlining is important for fish just as it's like important for birds, okay? Streamlining helps a bird cut through the air. It helps them be able to fly. It helps them to be able to pick up speed and be some of the fastest creatures on the face of the planet, okay? Streamlining is also important for a fish because it helps them cut through the water. It helps reduce that drag, that resistance that they would feel if they were swimming, or as they swim, they are swimming. <laughs> anyway, uh, their jaws can retract into the bottom of the head to aid in the streamlining. So they actually have the ability to um, put their jaw pretty much inside their skull. That way they can be even more streamlined, they can go quicker, they are not slowing down for anything. And then the jaw can have up to 20 rows of teeth. The teeth have no roots to hold them in the jaws, so they lose their teeth pretty freely. And because they lose their teeth pretty freely, they also replace their teeth very easily. They can go long periods without eating because the stomach expands to allow them to eat larger meals. Uh, we talked about this when we talked about snakes and the fact that snakes can go, they can eat one large meal and they can go months or even up to a year sometimes, depending on the species, without eating. The same thing is true of a shark, okay? They can go months, up to a year or more, depending on the species, without eating because their stomach, when they eat, their stomach expands and it doesn't, uh, it expands to consume everything that they've eaten because remember, they swallow their prey whole, all right? Or they might um, chomp it in pieces and swallow it, but they're still swallowing large portions of food, right? So their stomach expands to allow for that large portion of food to be taken in and then as that portion of food is digested, the stomach will contract back to the point where the shark goes, oh, I'm hungry, I should probably eat something. All right, the sharks bury their young alive, but some are viviparous. Most sharks never sleep because they lack a swim bladder. And if you remember when we talked about the swim bladder earlier in this chapter, the swim bladder is what keeps a fish from sinking if it stops moving, all right? So fish, uh, sharks don't have that swim bladder. They don't have that gas-filled chamber that they can pretty much expand at will in order to stand still, quote unquote, in the ocean. So they have to keep moving or else they are going to sink. Um, 
Sharks have one of the keenest senses of smell in the animal kingdom. They can detect prey up to two miles away. All right, so typically uh, the way they sense their prey is through the scent of blood. All right, so if they smell blood up to two miles away, that can be a, hey, there might be a meal over there for me. Let me go check that out. Any of your rays and your chimeras. Rays. These are characterized by their broad, flat bodies and their whip-like tails. I think rays are really cool to uh, watch swim because they swim differently than any other fish that you look at. All right. Um, they almost look like they're doing the wave or something while they're swimming. I just think they're really cool to watch swim. Um, but they're characterized by those broad, flat bodies, and those broad, flat bodies have to move differently than another fish's body would. Uh, they have these special openings behind their eyes that they breathe through, all right? And these are known as spiracles. They don't actually have nostrils uh, at the front of their face that they would breathe through, okay? These spiracles are located behind their eyes, and they breathe through those. Um, a couple types of rays, just to give you some ideas of what a ray does, or the different types of rays, not what they do, the different types out there that you could run into. All right, the most common is the stingray, and it is actually the most dangerous because of its venom, all right? Uh, if you have been to the beach, uh, especially here in Florida, you might uh, see signs that say, do the stingray shuffle, and that's when you have to shuffle your feet to kick up the sand to encourage stingrays to, hey, move away from me, because what they do is they'll sit on the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the ocean or that sandy surface, and you and they'll cover themselves up with sand to hide themselves. That way, they can attack their prey or not become the prey. But what happens to unsuspecting humans is they're walking along, not paying any attention, and then. They step on the tail, which has that uh, poisonous barb in it, and then the human gets infected, and it can be actually really, really dangerous if it's not taken care of very, very quickly. So that's why they say to do the stingray shuffle, because they don't want you to get stung or they don't want you to get uh, that poison put into your body. Uh, the giant manta is the largest ray. It can be up to 25 feet wide and weigh over 3,000 pounds. Um, if you have seen Finding Nemo, which I would imagine most of you have, uh, Mr. Ray is a giant manta ray, all right? Uh, skates are non-venomous rays with long noses. I think skates kind of look like a rat, a rat ray, kind of. That's what they look like to me anyway. Uh, but they do have a longer snout area than a stingray or a giant manta ray does. And then you have a sawfish, which has a long sawtoothed snout, and their snout really does look like a saw that you would cut down a tree with. And then you have your chimeras. <coughs> Excuse me. I promise I'm not sick. It's just the room is damp and I cough because of that. Anyway, they live near the bottom of the ocean. There are three families, short-nosed, long-nosed, and plow-nosed, and they feed on other fish, mollusks, and crustaceans. And then we're gonna talk about your lampreys and your hagfish just to round this chapter out, give you an idea of them. When you think of a lamprey and a hagfish, think of an eel-like body, okay? It's a very elongated body, um, and it looks kind of like a sea snake, but, it's not a sea snake, it's a fish, all right? Um, lampreys are found in fresh and salt water. Uh, they have a slimy, scaleless body that resembles an eel. Like I said, think of that elongated fish body type. That's what a lamprey and a hagfish has. Um, they lack a jaw and have a toothed tongue that they cut into their victims with and feed on their blood. Lampreys can actually be a very dangerous uh, predator for a lot of fish. And because they're so tiny most of the time, people don't think of them as a predator or as a danger. Uh, but what happens is they take that mouth, it's like a suction cup mouth, but it's lined with lots of really, really sharp teeth. And what they do is they actually cut off 
the top layer of skin of the fish they're going to attach to, they cut off that top layer of skin and they attach themselves and they just suck the blood out of whatever fish they're attached of whatever fish they're attached to. And they take all of the blood, they take all the nutrients they can get because they're selfish and they're gonna feed until they're full and some species will even there's not like a shut off valve for them they'll just feed and feed and feed and feed until the fish they're feeding on actually dies from being the prey and then you have hagfish these feed on the insides of dead fish um, i've heard them referred to as the scavengers of the ocean what they'll do is they will swim into the dead fish eat out all of the insides and leave just a hollow skeleton behind. Um, think of them like the vultures of the ocean, okay? Or the crows, you know, the scavenger birds that eat the roadkill on the side of the road. Well, that's what the hagfish does in the ocean. It eats the ocean kill, all right? So, yep, that is it for chapter 17. Uh, this is the last video for chapter 17. We'll be starting chapter 18 next week and if I remember correctly, we're going to start looking at bugs. So that'll be fun. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing all right. I miss you. I can't wait to see you guys again. Bye.